I am literally shaking right now. Please just stay and listen to this because it's really, really important. I have had to adjust my entire life the last month to deal with this. And I am not the type of person to put any brand on blast, but this is really, really serious. People are having serious health issues. I spent 26 hours in the ER, ended up getting an MRCP, which is like a special MRI scan of my organs. And I had jaundice of the skin, yellowing of my eyes and skin. They freaking took my gallbladder out. Okay, I'm freaking out because I swear I thought that I was alone on this and like no one knew what I was going through. My life has changed forever. I just want to feel like myself again. Hey everyone, I'm in Maine. Obviously different backdrop than usual. I thought I'd take this time to make a video discussing the daily harvest situation and everything that's going on. If you don't know about this situation, I'm gonna fill you in, but chances are you probably do because it's becoming a pretty big story. Everything is still unfolding, and so everything is obviously alleged, and a lot of this is sort of consumer reported on you know social media platforms so nothing is really confirmed by any federal agency or by the company right now i think everyone's just trying to piece everything together and i wanted to make this video because i have done daily harvest videos in the past i have done three of them and the first daily harvest video that i did which was just a overview sort of review of the company and the service is one of my most viewed videos given that i could have potentially inspired people to try daily harvest i feel like i sort of have a responsibility to clear the air on what's going on sort of give my stance on the whole thing i also just want to talk about daily harvest as a company overall how they've handled the situation what they could have done better. I know I don't have a huge platform, but I think this topic has been pretty underreported so far by major media organizations. And so any little piece of coverage or exposure, I feel like is a good thing at this point. So I first became aware of the situation through Twitter. And then from there, I got sent over to TikTok where I saw a few TikToks of people talking about their experiences of getting really sick. From TikTok, I was referred to a Reddit thread which has been, I think, definitely the most explosive and active in terms of people sharing their experiences. Basically what happened is that people have been getting really, really, really sick from eating the Daily Harvest French lentil and leek crumbles. People having to go to the ER, being sick for weeks, having extremely elevated liver numbers, and in some cases, people having to have their gallbladders removed. And a common theme with so many people's stories was the hospitals and the doctors having no idea what was going on, which is it's just terrifying. I can't imagine how scary that must have been for people to have not known what was going on with them, but to be so extremely sick and in some cases having to have an organ removed. And so I think when all this stuff started coming out on social media, you know, I've seen so many people on the Reddit thread being like, thank God I found this. I had no idea what was going on and, you know, sharing their stories that way. So these Daily Harvest Crumbles were a relatively new product. I want to say no more than four-ish months old. And I had seen them because on the Daily Harvest website, they've been pretty heavily promoting them since they came out and there were two different types of crumbles one was the french lentil and leek and the other was walnut mushroom maybe thankfully i never tried the crumbles although i thought about it you know in the past when daily harvest has come out with new products i have tried them and reviewed them for my videos so i did it with the ice creams i did it with the flatbreads and the milks and so this is totally the type of thing that i would have tried for some reason i didn't i think i just wasn't convinced that that they would be worth it or that they would be good and so i never tried them and i am so incredibly grateful so again really hard to pinpoint timelines and you know how long this has been going on for but it seems like there was a specific batch of these crumbles that were bad and this batch was sent in a pr mailing to influencers um, but also a ton of just regular people had purchased them as well. So now all these people with these huge platforms that they were 
assuming would give them positive press, are now able to share their extremely negative stories. There are about 28,000 units of the product that have been affected. From this article in The Observer, 470 people so far have reported severe medical reactions. I can only imagine that number is just going to continue to multiply. There are a hundred people so far planning on suing Daily Harvest. Most, if not all, the people suing are working with William Marler, who is a really well-known uh, personal injury attorney who specializes in food safety issues, and he's represented victims in a lot of really high-profile food poisoning cases. And according to this article, which was released on June 28th, 12 people have reported having to have their gallbladders removed so far. Again, I can only imagine that's going to be way more people than that. I didn't know much about the gallbladder, but apparently it aids in digestion and it stores bile. It is something that you can live without. It seems like it doesn't have a huge effect having it removed, but some people do end up having digestive issues. In terms of what happened and how this happened, the crumbles were obviously contaminated by something, but no one's sure exactly what yet. There's obviously an investigation open with the FDA. The law firm is also doing their own private testing. In a June 27th update from the Daily Harvest CEO, she said, so far testing has come back negative for foodborne pathogens, including Listeria, E. coli, Salmonella, Staph, B. serious, and Clostridium species. Testing on major allergens, including egg, soy, milk, and gluten have also so far come back negative. I mean, it would be really bizarre for this to all be because of allergens, so obviously it's not. She also said, we initiated testing for a wide range of toxins known as mycotoxins, including aflatoxins. The first round of testing on the most common have come back negative, but we will continue to cast a wider net to ensure we are not missing anything. So again, this is all alleged and speculation, but a lot of people have been speculating that this could have been caused by aflatoxin, uh, also known as aspirin. Gillis flavus. It could be aflatoxin. You know, aflatoxin is more prevalent in third world countries, but it is a possibility. The symptoms, if you look at the uh, symptoms of aflatoxosis are like almost identical to people's reported experiences. And a lot of the people who are affected by this are also concerned about potential permanent liver damage, which is completely understandable. So one of the biggest updates since I filmed this video has been the discovery of an ingredient called Terra and the hypothesizing about its role in making people sick from the crumbles. So the lawyer, Bill Marler, posted some updates on his legal blog about this. It seems like the legal team is the one who's responsible for finding this connection. I had no idea what Terra was, but it is a fruit tree slash shrub that grows in South America. And from the fruit, you can harvest two ingredients Terra flower or Terra gum. So it's been coming out that this other company named Revive that I had never heard of, but they sort of seem like a daily harvest knockoff, that people are actually getting really sick from consuming their smoothies as well. And Terra is also an ingredient in some of their smoothies. People's medical reactions from the Revive smoothies is pretty much identical from people's reaction to the Daily Harvest crumbles. And the Daily Harvest French lentil and leek crumbles are the only Daily Harvest products that have Terra flour in it. This Reddit comment I thought was pretty interesting. Terra flour and Terra gum are not approved by the FDA that I can see, and they aren't even classified as GRAs, aka generally regarded as safe. Some studies have shown liver damage and death from too much tannic acid. Very limited research on that. Why didn't they use the Terra gum? Still not FDA approved, but more widely accepted in other countries. It comes from Peru. Why the flower? Because it sounds better? So Bill Marler ended one of his blog posts by being like, Daily Harvest, where do you source your Terra flower from? So that's a lead that they seem like they're definitely going to be following. And if it is a flower, that would explain how potentially it could have gotten into and contaminated some of the other, other Daily Harvest foods, even though it's only technically supposed to be in the lentil and leek crumbles. So again, this is just another theory, but it seems kind of promising and we'll just have to see what happens. So I want to talk about Daily Harvest's response because I think this is a big piece of the story. The response hasn't been great. So when all this started coming out like a week or two ago, the first thing Daily Harvest did uh, apparently was send an email to people who had ordered the product and basically just being like, don't eat them, throw them out. But they did still leave them up for sale on their website and they still kept all of the promotional posts on Twitter and Instagram because like I said, since this was a newish product, they were still like heavily promoting it, but they just added like a disclaimer being like, please read our update about the lentil crumbles 
at the link in our bio, but they kept the post up. Sort of like still endorsing the product, but like with a little asterisk, like just be careful. Some people are having some GI issues. They had also sent an email to people who ordered the crumbles, implying that they hadn't cooked the crumbles to the proper internal temperature, which is really ridiculous because first of all, these are French lentils. So regular lentils are tiny. French lentils, are even tinier. So to imply that people should have been checking the internal temperature of these tiny little lentils that they assumed were pre-cooked because they are or they're supposed to be with Daily Harvest, that's the whole point, is really ridiculous. Daily Harvest response making it seem like it was a user error was not a good look in my opinion. And it sort of implies that this is like a common thing. Like, well, if you don't cook your lentils properly, you could get extremely, extremely sick. You know, I was talking to my partner, Paul, who has been a lifelong vegetarian and he's like, I've been eating lentils my entire life and I've never gotten sick from them. Like, this is not a common thing. Another thing that I saw on Reddit was that Daily Harvest had apparently been getting reports of this issue since April and it was only in the last week when it sort of blew up on social media that they actually addressed it. So that's pretty alarming if that's true. So since June 19th, Daily Harvest has posted four updates on the situation on their website. In all of the updates, they tell people that if they have the crumbles in their freezer that they should throw them away. And then of course, many people on Reddit are saying, don't do that, do not throw them away, you know, sequester them so that they're not exposed to any other food you might have, but don't throw them away because the FDA might need to test them. So I thought it was interesting that Daily Harvest is like, you throw it away, get rid of it. Like try and get rid of the evidence, I guess. While the lentil crumbles are getting all the attention, I've also seen a ton of reports on Reddit saying that people are getting sick from other Daily Harvest foods as well. But in the most recent update from June 27th that was posted by the Daily Harvest founder and CEO Rachel Drury, she said in bold in the statement, we are confident this issue is limited to our French lentil and leek crumbles and does not impact any of our other 100 plus menu items. She also says, you know, we're still eating all the products, we're still feeding our family the products, you know, trying to inspire confidence, I guess. The people on Reddit were pointing out that this confidence that she has can't really be that great because she also says in the same statement that they've been working 24 seven to try to figure this out. They can't figure it out. Working with the FDA, state agencies, and multiple independent labs, as well as experts in microbiology, food safety, and toxicology to conduct testing. And so people were saying, you know, if this many people are on board trying to figure it out and you're working around the clock trying to figure it out and you still haven't figured it out, how can you be so confident that nothing else has been affected by this? There was a Twitter thread written by a woman named Dr. Sarah Tabor, who is a biocrop scientist and industrial safety professional. This Twitter thread was really interesting and so I'm going to read a few of the tweets. It's really unusual to see these kind of symptoms from a foodborne illness. Usually it's more like diarrhea and vomiting. Just wow, I have so many questions. Organ damage? How does one manage that? For what it's worth, the rash of venture capital funded direct-to-consumer food businesses we've had in the last decade has raised a lot of red flags for me. Here are some thoughts. When you look at direct-to-consumer food business models, frankly, a lot of them are about entrepreneurs who want to sell food but don't want to be asked to deal with all the hygiene and quality assurance safeguards that grocery stores require. Why? Because grocery stores got tired of getting caught spreading outbreaks. When direct-to-consumer food companies talk about why they're circumventing grocery retailers, they tend to point to things like shelving fees and other economic issues, which are real, important, and need to be tackled. What direct-to-consumer food companies don't say is selling straight to consumers is a shortcut. The US's food safety laws are crazy lax. That left grocery chains to basically force food safety onto food plants themselves by requiring audits. It's a shitty system, but at least it's a system. I'm mystified as to why so many well-funded entrepreneurs find food safety so scary that they think building an alternative supply chain is easier. But what do I know? I've only successfully trained people with high school educations to handle food safety competently. Beyond dodging audits, direct-to-consumer food companies also often avoid even more safety regulations by getting themselves classified as restaurants or retailers rather than food manufacturing plants, which is what they are. If you sell that much food across state lines, you ain't a restaurant. Behind all the aspirational direct-to-consumer marketing about, quote, connecting directly with consumers, what they really are is venture-funded companies that use direct-to-consumer to circumvent basic food laws 
and the makeshift audit system retailers made to cope with how rudimentary our food laws are. Based on what I've seen in the food system so far, the only way this direct-to-consumer hygiene and quality assurance situation will get better is if venture capital gets caught and loses ass tons of money. That is how businesses learn to behave themselves. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't know any of that. I didn't know that our food safety laws were so lax in the US. I guess I just assumed, you know, if it's a big company, if it's well-funded, like I'm sure they have tons of safety hoops to jump through and apparently they don't. And it's interesting because I think in the Vistro video, I was talking about how in a lot of ways I felt like you're kind of better off just buying frozen meals from the grocery store and heating those up because at least you'll be able to pick them out and know you really like them and probably spend a lot less money versus, you know, doing a service like Vistro, which I didn't think was worth it. Now that stance is kind of reinforced by reading this that, you know, grocery stores have a lot stricter food regulations than something like a Vistro or like obviously a Daily Harvest. Regarding her tweet about direct to consumer food business models being basically just entrepreneurs wanting to sell food but not have to deal with the safety laws, someone shared on Reddit this June 15th Forbes article. So very, very, very recent. Like this must have come out right before all this started going down, which was about Rachel Drory, the Daily Harvest CEO and founder. It was essentially like a puff piece, vanity piece type of thing. So according to this article, Daily Harvest is worth $1.1 billion and has had four major funding rounds. The founder, Rachel Drory, is reportedly worth $350 million. Both of Rachel's parents were entrepreneurs. She went to business school at Columbia. And in the article, they shared this anecdote, which was pretty interesting. In this story, the dean of the Columbia Business School asked the incoming class to articulate the purpose of business. The article says, quote, as classmates gave politically correct answers like doing good or solving needs, Drory responded honestly, to make money. A business can't do any good, Drory says, if it doesn't make money. There's nothing wrong with wanting a business to make money. That's the system we live in. We live in a capitalist society. The point of businesses is to make money. But I want to contrast this with something I said in my original Daily Harvest video. It just sort of feels like all these companies are just like, okay, how can we like get people's money like once a month? Like how can we get someone's credit card and charge them once a month or once a week? And then they like move backwards and are like, maybe we could do a service. Maybe we could do like a food delivery service. Maybe it could be like a plant-based food. Why can't I just order a box? Something about it, and I talked about this in the purple carrot video, something about it feels kind of scammy to me. I just found this story pretty interesting, juxtaposed with my instinct about the company from that video. You know, the making money part being the first priority and the actual idea being the second priority seems like it should be the other way around. So to relate this all back to veganism, because that is what my channel's about, Daily Harvest is a vegan company, even though, as I said in my original Daily Harvest video, they don't really proudly state that fact. And of course, as a vegan, I love to see vegan companies doing really well. I hate to see vegan companies doing badly, especially in a way that you know, makes them look really bad. And I can imagine that Daily Harvest introduced a lot of people to vegan food that wouldn't have previously tried it. I can only hope that this whole situation won't turn people off of vegan food, especially off of lentils. To Daily Harvest credit, like they've been around since 2017, I think, and this is the first time anything like this has happened. I will say that we know of. There could have been something, you know, things that happened that we didn't know about, but the CEO being like, I'm still eating it, my family's still eating it. It just made me think like, all these people have all probably gotten poisoned by this <laughs> and like just aren't admitting it, right? Because if, if she truly is, you know, getting high on her own supply as she claims, I can only imagine that she's gotten sick already and knew about this. In terms of what this means for Daily Harvest, a lot of people are speculating that the company won't survive this. I don't know if they will. I know that having a hundred pending lawsuits and people having, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in medical bills in some cases, uh, that's going to be pretty tough to recover from. It's also going to be tough to recover just the public perception. I hadn't done a daily harvest order in quite a few months, which is pretty unusual. Normally, Paul and I would do a daily harvest order at least once a month, but we hadn't 
and now I'm very grateful that we had it. I can't see us ordering from them again anytime soon, um, but like I said, we'll just have to see what happens. And I am just sending lots of positive thoughts and wishes to all the people who were affected by this and hoping that there aren't any long-term effects from this. Like I said, it must have been extremely scary to be going through this and not know why. But like the woman on Twitter said, which I definitely agree with, there's gotta be some sort of retooling of this system with direct-to-consumer food companies. Knowing what I know now, I would have a hard time feeling comfortable ordering from one of these pre-prepped meal food services again. But that's it for now. That's all we really know so far and we'll just have to keep an eye on things and see what happens. Let me know what you guys think of all of this. It's a pretty crazy story and I will see you again soon. Bye.